After that, I gave them a math journal problem, and it was a word problem that ultimately involved subtraction that had some regrouping. So I wanted to see if they could apply some of the strategies that we talked about both in number talks and also with the manipulatives to their word problem in math journal. Caitlin, what's another strategy you shared? I'm going to do compensation, but number talk style. And so what I do is I give them each a little slip of paper, and I have a journal too. They go ahead and glue that in, and then they have to talk with their partner about how they're going to solve this problem. And that's sort of my starts. They sold 49 rolls. How many do they have left? And then I might call on a few students. Can you explain to the entire class what you're going to do to kind of give everyone a start? And so a couple students will share, and then they go ahead and work together. And they have to be really clear about labeling. That's something that I've trained them on, to label everything, and then to have a complete sentence answer. At the beginning of the year, I used to provide a lot of sentence frames for those complete sentence answers. But by now, since it's the, towards the end of the year, I've sort of released that. Now they have to come up with it on their own, and they're pretty good about that at this point. And then they work together. And then I go around while they're working and I might ask some questions. What's your next strategy? Why did you do this? Um, what do you think about this? Um, it's really questioning. It's less telling. It's questioning. What's another strategy? Or a way. Well, talk to them about it because they may have a really good idea, okay? Ask them. And then I kind of keep in my mind some interesting strategies that I saw. So then I will call on those students to come up and share under the document cam. And then I give the other students who are sitting there an opportunity to ask them questions or make comments about their math journals. And is the algorithm for checking your answer or just or is or is it just for uh is it for just a way to do it? This is something that I started doing about three years ago. I saw a video of a class in I think it was Robla. And I was so impressed, they were kindergartners. And I thought, well, if kindergartners can do it, second graders can do it. I've got to try this. The other thing is I love that they're learning multiple methods and that they're sharing multiple methods with each other, with me. They have a big toolbox now. Before, they just taught the algorithm. And now they have all these different tools that they can use. And I see some students who latch onto a particular method that I never would have taught before. And every other day, I do a math journal with the students. So I usually try to pick a problem that is meaty. There requires some thinking. Okay, so what's your second strategy that you're doing? You're gonna check your models with the algorithm, okay? I used to be a teacher that dreaded teaching math. It was very by the book. I never really thought about the bigger picture of math. A complete sentence with our what? With our birthday? No. With our name? No. What? With the answer, right? So I'm very excited about math now because I really think that the student discourse has really helped students to describe what they're doing in math and really truly understand deeply their mathematical thinking. I don't feel like I have to get through math lessons. I'm more excited about what are my students gonna to learn today and what are they going to teach me today. I have students who say that they're gonna be mathematicians when they grow up. And to me, that is just amazing. Okay, give Caitlin a big round of applause.